Hey, what's going on gamers? It looks like it takes longer and longer for me to put out a new video. For me, it's always not enough new changes. I keep thinking I need to put something more. This time, I didn't want to delay the video update. And I'm gonna show what's going on right now. Even if there's not much to show. But first, I just wanted to remind you that my game is available to download right now. Because I got asked if there will be possibility to buy the ROM for the EverDrive. Come on. The ROM is free and the link to it is in this video's description. Okay, so the last time I kinda exaggerated the problem with the free space in the ROM a little bit. Especially in the thumbnail. I still have plenty enough of free space in the ROM. But the deal is the space is just not in the main bank where I need it the most. I was kind of reluctant to move code blocks from the main bank to other banks just because this would make my game to run a bit slower. But looks like I have no other choice because recently I was constantly battling for every bit in this bank. I kept freeing up several bytes and then boom, they are gone. While doing that, I still somehow managed to add a completely new location and a granny's house in it. Now you can visit granny and she will give you a couple of basic quests. So far she's not interconnected with other villagers. So really you can completely ignore her. Well, I actually had a problem with this new location. After I exited the granny's house, I needed to scroll a little bit and with that I needed to push my collision data as well and for some reason I could not do it correctly. What's funny that's not the first time that something like that happened. It was always painful to fix the collision data offset after moving from one location to another especially when some scrolling was involved. I've talked about my overly complex collision detection system in more detail in my first NES game videos. And I got more than one comment saying that this type of system is a bit unnecessary. Now I can say you guys were completely correct. And I'm grateful that you pointed that problem out. I just needed to react faster and get rid of that crappy code. It might be cool to have a separate collision layer, but it's not a modern system where you have unlimited amounts of memory and computing power. So now I've decided to make a much simpler collision system. I'm simply checking the tiles the character is walking on. I divided the background tile set in half. The first 128 tiles are passable and the rest of them are obstacles. After I rearranged the tiles and fixed my existing maps, I tested them in my map editor. And as you see, the collision layer looks quite fine. Even the crash site looks okay. So it seems it's not necessary to have a separate collision layer and edit it manually. Also, as you see, I haven't abandoned my map editor. I added a grid, which can be turned on and off. This improves the map editing experience quite significantly. And also, you can no longer edit the collision layer. Of course, with the new collision system, there are some problems with the hill houses. But I guess I can fix that by copying snow tiles to the obstacle part of the tile set. Or probably... A better solution would be to create a lookup table in the ROM which tells if the tile is passable or not. But I think I will make that later. I was surprised that after deleting the old collision code, I only freed up just one kilobyte of memory in the main bank. I was expecting way much more. Unfortunately, it appeared that the new collision is much slower than the old one. Because for each collision check I needed to calculate an address for a map row in the ROM. So how can I possibly improve the speed? Well, I've decided to create a huge lookup table in the RAM and store all the map row addresses there. So every time I would enter a new location I would fill this table with addresses 
from the maps of this location. This helped me not only to speed up the collision checks, but also to reduce the code because I could reuse the same address table to check if I can use a hammer or a fishing rod on a tile and I would no longer need to perform same calculations. So I had more than one comment suggesting that I should use the RLE compression algorithm. So I thought why not to give it a try. For those who don't know it's a very simple compression method which instead of storing multiple bytes with the same value in a row counts the sequences of repeated bytes and stores the byte value and the repetition count of that value. So this way you can save up a lot of space in the ROM, especially if you have large bitmaps with little or no detail or screens that have large chunks of repeated tiles. Sure, I could use this to compress my background and sprite tilesets, but as a first attempt I just wanted to compress the static screens that I don't need to scroll or check collisions in them. There are probably many ways how to implement this algorithm, but I just wanted to be able to display the screens that are compressed with the screen tool application. As you see there is an option which enables the RLE compression. And if you would try to save a name table after you enabled this option, it will be saved as compressed. After reading the screen tool source code, I found out that the application looks for an unused byte in your name table. And when it finds that byte, it uses it as a tag value. So the first byte in your compressed screen is precisely that tag value. After it goes a some kind of tile value and right after that goes another tag value. But only if this tile is repeated. If so, the next thing will be the repetition count. But if the tile is not repeated, there will be some another tile value and so on. The compressed file simply ends with a tile that has a zero repetition count. But what happens if I would use all the 256 tiles in my screen and there would be no unused ones? Well in that case the screen tool would say that the RLE compression is not possible. Also if by any chance you would have a screen that is filled with the same tile, the screen tool would not simply save it as a tile value and let's say two bytes of repetition count. No, the maximum repetition count for a tile in the screen tool is 256. So if a tile is repeated more than 256 times in a row, the screen tool would simply write tile value 256 and then repeat this sequence until the final repetition count is reached. As you see my explosion screen wasn't compressed that perfectly. But I guess the data is still much smaller than it was before. So I've compressed not only my cutscene screens but also the title, game over and even the menu screen. What I love about this is the fact that the screens are loaded still fairly quickly. I guess now I simply can't complain anymore that I don't have any free space left. The next thing I tried was a bit unnecessary, but I really wanted to do it. And I'm talking about playing audio samples, particularly speech. Sure, it's nothing special by today's standards. Maybe it might be a bit annoying. Where did you learn to fly? But back in the day I was really impressed when I heard for the first time speech in ZX Spectrum games. Or when I played Blades of Steel on my Famiclone. Blades of Steel. I was like, wow, my, my console can talk. So from that moment I knew it was possible to do speech on the NES. And my game simply must have this feature. So I tried to record a simple game over. 
freeze and play it during the game over screen. The NES CPU has a channel for the digitized sounds called DPCM. Since I'm using the Famous Studios sound engine, I needed to import my recorded samples into Famous Studio first. As you can see, there's a section for your samples where you can load up some WAV files. What is weird that we must put our sound samples into the Famous Studios music file. If we would put our samples and would try to export them as a sound effects code, the samples simply would not get exported, which is odd. To play the sample you have two options, play the sample itself or to play the music track that uses your sample. The single sample effect will not be played if other music track is playing at the time. So you need to stop it. Unless of course it's the same music track that contains your sample. So yeah, it is necessary to create a new music track and also to use a DPCM instrument in it. You need to click the rightmost icon on the instrument, like so. And there you can attach your sample to particular notes and adjust the pitch if it's necessary. After that you can simply use those notes in your music track and it will play your samples when those notes are activated. A very annoying thing about Fam Studios sound engine is that you have to put your digitized samples in the main bank. You must assign a value to Fam Studios DPCM offset from this interval. If it's something else, your sample simply would not be played and in the best case you would hear some strange farts or some Godzilla noises. This is really bad because the samples can be very very large and hog all the space in the main bank which is crucial for your game's core logic and the NMI. For instance, my first recorded sample took about 4 kilobytes. Game over. Sure, it's not much, but you need to remember the whole main bank is only 16 kilobytes. So I had to relocate a bunch of code to the second bank and it was still not enough to fit the sample. Luckily, I found out you can simply reduce the sample rate. But with every decrement, you need to reduce the pitch on the notes in the DPCM instrument as well. Sure, the sample would no longer sound as good, at least it would be much smaller in size. I had to create a separate segment in the main bank, so the starting address for the DPCM samples would remain the same, even if I would add more code or some other stuff. I don't know, maybe there's some undocumented way, or maybe I need to edit the code of the sound engine, so I could place my samples in some other bank because i really hate to use the main bank if you know if it's possible then please share your knowledge in the comments so yeah now i have this was it really worth it well at least i freed up a large chunk of memory in my main bank guess what that's all the changes i wanted to talk about I hope it won't take that long for my next video to appear and hopefully I will have more things to show. So if you're interested in my further NES game journey then please subscribe to the channel. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.